What is going on YouTube? My name is Lucas and today we're going to be talking about Humble. Humble Nation, let's get after it. It is year 2022. We have crossed the threshold of 2021 into a new year and a lot of new things we can anticipate. There's a lot of new things that we are excited for as investors in this company. Honestly, I did a recap of 2021, really kind of since the very beginning of Humble. You guys can see the video right here. Go ahead and check that out if you haven't. It really kind of goes into a lot of great detail. But that also, I want to piggyback off of that, and the S1 was released. And we're going to go into detail what the S1 really kind of signifies and why this is a big piece. But if you are a humble investor, you need to go check that out. There's a lot of great information in there. There's a lot of answers that can be had from the S1. And really it goes into a lot of detail on the history of this company. So go check it out. You can find a lot of tremendous information, I'm telling you. But I'm excited to talk in this video about some of the tweets Brian Foote has put out. In addition, that was announced through Twitter uh, there's just a lot of information, guys, that I'm excited to provide content to you, uh, as always. So if you're interested in Humble, because I know a ton of you are, I suggest you stay tuned right after this. Let's get it. But before we dive in this video and start talking about Humble and Twitter and Brian Foote and the amazing community known as Humble Nation, I ask that you guys smash that subscribe button. It helps out tremendously. It lets me know that you guys are interested in the channel and anytime content drops, it comes your way. I ask that you guys smash that like button as it helps us really kind of evolve and develop from this algorithm known as the YouTube algorithm. It helps out tremendously. It lets content get out and it lets people gain awareness of Humble. I also ask that you guys comment down below as the comment section is meaningful to me. Uh, it allows me to kind of respond to some of your guys' questions or really some of just your comments. And I enjoy you know, responding to those and engaging in those. And it allows me to make better content in my videos as well. So make sure you guys get up in that comment section. And uh, I appreciate it. So now it's time to get into the video. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been doing a ton of research. Like a ton. And you're going to see my notes section here in a second just on one subject matter. And the reason is, is because I really want to be prepared entering into these videos. I don't want to just blab on and kind of just carry on. I want to provide good quality content to you guys on a company that started at the base level and literally started at the rubble of a house. We're seeing the walls, the foundation being built, and we're going to start to see everything come together to create such a huge phenomenal piece of of art honestly that's what we're seeing being done but guys there's a lot of due diligence that needs to go into that and it has to be good quality information the first thing i want to talk about is the s1 obviously that was filed right before the new year started uh brian foot came to twitter and really kind of hit up on the s1 i think it was a little bit of a cryptic tweet so we're going to go over this he says, our legal team has advised that it is best to provide our humble annual report and see why 2022 roadmap updates only after the end of the quiet period, which we'll talk about. For the latest information on the company, please review the S1 registration statement that was filed on December 27, 2021. So anyone who really is interested understands what the S1 actually signifies. It's a big deal, ladies and gentlemen. It truly is a big deal. So an S1 is kind of like one of the first steps that you take when it comes to an uplist. In our case, in Humble's case, the whole entire outlook is to transition up to the OTCQB. Now, this is the first step, but what the S1 provides is just a massive amount of information. Now, I am going to be talking about, obviously, the, the Series B shares. I have notes right here, guys. You can see I have notes. I'm going to provide those notes. But I'm going to hold off on doing the Series B video right now because I'm diving in more. And I want to provide the best, again, the best quality content to you guys to make sure that the numbers are lined up, 
they're correct the numbers exactly who goes to what belongs there so i'm going to make sure that i'm going to do my research and provide that to you don't don't think that i'm not going to do the shares or the series b shares but i do want to touch on his tweets he said the false information crews are out and this was put out on december 29th uh heavy today on social media regarding the humble share, uh, series b shares here are the facts so he goes into literally a four-step uh tweet uh, number two of that was Humble CEO, whose holdings represent roughly 43.5% of the total Series B shares, takes a $1 salary, it has sold zero shares, and has locked up all his preferred B shares through December 31st, 2022 at minimum. Uh, three out of four, he said Humble co-founders, who represent 14.6% of the total pool of Series B shares, have also sold zero shares and will sell no more than 1% of their holdings per quarter, if at all, through December 31st, 2022. And then it's four out of four, Humble LLC, early investors, employees, and service providers, who represent roughly 41.9% of the Series B, voted to impose strict conversation or conversion limits on themselves of 5% of their holdings in December 21, January 2022, and 3% in the following 18 months. Guys, I'm telling you, I've done a lot of research. I will be making a video of this, and I wanted to make sure that I cover that to let you guys know it will be coming, and it will be coming soon. Um, but an, a reason why I wanted to provide this to you is this is just some of the information that is provided in the S1. And again, it's significant because it allows us to uplist to that next tier in the OTC market. That would also indicate why Brian Foote said in his last tweet, let me get back to that just for you guys. Uh, basically, he stated, our legal team has advised that it is best to provide our humble annual report and CY 2022 roadmap updates only after the end of the quiet period. The reason they're in a quiet period is because they're in that process to get uplisted which is why he said refer to our S1. The S1 is then tied to and the first step to go to the OTCQB. Hopefully this all makes sense. So there's a reason why they're in a quiet period, and this is the reason why the S1 was put out. Guys, I'm telling you again, and I'm going to say this multiple times in this video, the S1 is loaded with content. It is loaded with information on Humble. It is just packed full with great information on acquisitions that were made, how much money it costs, I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, it really dives into Humble Pay, and it talks about a lot of that information that people uh, seek out as early investors or, honestly, people who are just interested in what this company is doing. I'm telling you, the S1 has a lot of good information. Go check it out. Uh, but the next thing that I also want to talk about is an addition of a Major League Baseball player. Um, and I think this is significant because not only is this Major League Baseball player actually pretty a pretty good pitcher i mean the guy's throwing 91 92 miles an hour wicked slider has played for teams like the st louis cardinals the tampa bay rays and is currently with the philadelphia phillies is a lefty like myself uh ryan sheriff joins up with humble and he actually announced that on twitter so it's pretty cool to see his announcement he says i have officially partnered with humble pay humble ceo and then he tags glenn humble and hashtag humble so uh there's a lot of good information that i think can be had from ryan not only is he tied to major league baseball he's also part of a big time organization in the philadelphia phillies now but i also think there's more to that that's a lot deeper ryan sheriff obviously is very in in depth with nfts he's very involved with crypto i believe so there's a lot more that is coming than just an athlete and i think that signifies just kind of how humble works how they function they see an opportunity but they know that there's a lot more to it and ryan definitely is going to provide that so again congratulations to ryan on joining and officially becoming a partner of humble i think that's big 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 time um and again the guy throws 91, 92 miles an hour, wicked slider. Uh, excited to see him pitch. Maybe I'll pick him up on the fantasy squad this year. We'll just have to see. Uh, but I'm excited to make that announcement for sure. The final piece that I'm going to touch on in this video really, I think, sparks a lot for me. And I think a lot of people are going to start to kind of see the correlation with what I'm talking about. So Shark Tank's Kevin O'Leary believes NFTs could outshine Bitcoin. And this article that was written on Seeking Alpha wasn't necessarily directed at Humble, 
But this is the type of stuff that I think is going to start drawing a massive amount of attention to them. So we're going to jump in real quick. This article is not very long. It says, Kevin O'Leary, the famed Shark Tank investor, thinks non-fungible tokens could become a much bigger, more fluid market potentially than just Bitcoin alone, he told CNBC in a televised interview. Keep in mind, an NFT is a cryptographic asset that represents real-world objects and also serves as an important medium in the metaverse. You're going to see a lot of movement in terms of doing authentication and insurance policies and real estate transfer taxes all online over the next few years, O'Leary said. Note the NFT Google searches already surpassed crypto and Bitcoin for the first time ever towards the end of December. He continued to say, we'll see what happens, but I'm making that bet and I'm investing on both sides of the equation. O'Leary told CNBC. Meanwhile, NFT related stocks, ETFs are mixed so far on Wednesday, including Venco Ventures, which I believe it's BPIG was down 3.1%. Cord- uh, Cordia is an OTCPK, uh, ticker symbol CORG, Defiance Digital Revolution, which is an ETF, NFTZ is down uh, 1.3%, Hall of Fame Resort HOFV down uh, 2.3%, and then they add and tag Humble. Obviously, we're aware HMBL, uh, it was down just a little bit when this article was written. Uh, And finally, Dolphin Entertainment, DLPN. Now, guys, the reason why I wanted to provide this is to the fact that it says humble. Now, it says right here at the bottom, previously on October 5th, 2021, NFT sales soared to $10.7 billion in quarter three. Guys, they are tagging humble in an article that is of significance because of O'Leary's involved. CNBC is involved. And they're talking about NFTs and crypto, which... Us as Humble fans, we're completely aware of everything that they're involved with. But what this is doing is this is like a marketing piece. This is getting the information out. A lot of people read and seek out Seeking Alpha. A lot of people really find out and are, are, you know, pay for a subscription of Seeking Alpha. So the more and more that Humble is involved in content like this, the more and more they start to get on, you know, I guess tickers that can run across the bottom. Uh, The more and more interest that is drawn the awareness it comes about. I also think, too, the next step of moving up in the OTC is a big thing, which is why George Sharp is involved again. Um, I just think that there's a lot of movement we can start to expect to happen here in 2022. I truthfully believe, and this is a perfect opportunity to remind you guys, I'm not a financial advisor, and anything I say in this video is for pure entertainment purposes only, and that's exactly what I'm here to do is Provide good, entertaining content to you guys. So hopefully you guys are drawing the the entertainment for sure. I personally believe that 2021 was that exactly foundation year. It was a year to kind of work the kinks out, to understand what works, what doesn't work from a business standpoint, to really kind of iron out the, the app itself and get things functioning and working. And, hey, this didn't work, but this did work. We're going to go ahead and do that. I think uh, attacking and going ahead and getting the ticketing aspect out of the way, really accomplishing a lot of that NFT portion and and getting athletes on board and and doing a lot of that, you're developing and getting the attention around it. um, and, And I think that was key in 2021. 2022 is here now. The app is rolling. People are starting to promote it. I mean, we got Nick Carter on board. There's a slew of athletes. I just named one. That is now a part of this that can promote it and market it. I think that's what 2022 is going to be involved with. I'm going to come back to this portion because when the actual full year roadmap of 2022 comes out, when Brian Foote puts that out, I'm excited to see how much of that is going to entail actually getting the name out there and spreading awareness and maybe you know hiring a, a marketing company or all kinds of different things. I think there's a lot that we can forecast that could happen. But honestly, I think they're in the stage now where it's just awareness, getting people to understand what the app is capable of doing, what, you know, what they can do within the app and and manipulate certain things and send money and send tokens. And I mean, there's a lot of a a lot of crypto aspects. So I think there's a lot that people just aren't aware of. And I think that's what 2022 is going to signify. And I think that's where we really start to move, honestly, and in my opinion. And now we've come to my favorite part of any video, and that is chart breaking down time. So let's swing on over here. Check out HMBL Humble, as we are all aware. 
Today it opened at 28 cents. It got its high as 32 cents. Its low was 25 cents. Its volume was 6.376 million. Current market cap is 310.7 million. 52 week high is seven. That's cut off $7.72. Its 52-week low is 21 cents. Its average volume is 8.496 million. So we are looking at a one-day chart. And the reason is, is because, holy smokes, ladies and gentlemen, right around the end of the day, the volume poured in, and we saw this thing run up. I mean, it's visually right there for you. Uh, so uh, there was a lot of continuous buying of numerous amounts, um, and it caused this thing to run basically from... I would say about 27 cents, a little bit below the 27 cent mark, all the way up to the 32 cent mark. Um, this did close at 31.9. Uh, that was up 17.42%. So I've been doing a lot of research, like you guys are aware. There's a lot of people that cover Humble from different standpoints. The Humble Nation is absolutely incredible. Uh, and there's been a ton of people who really talk Humble on Twitter, stock twits. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, but I've been finding out through a series of people, yacht boys, I want to give you a shout out, uh, tonight when we were talking, um, you know, he kind of t touched on the fact that a lot of the gaps and the lower ends have been covered. There really isn't any more downward gaps except for like way, way down, which, you know, there's always a chance that could happen and they could get filled, but to realistically hit that something has to go South for where we're at majority of those gaps have been filled and the only gaps that need to be filled are on the way up now. Um, and so there's a lot of good things that could be coming for this stock and the share price. The thing is, is there's still a lot to go guys. We're, we're just now starting out 2022. Um, and you know, we have a long way to come back to where we were, but the company again is going to evolve and the share price will evolve with it. Um, and I think that's just what we're going to see happen and transition in 2022. I'm excited, guys. I'm going to continue to break down the S1. I'm going to continue to dive in and dissect content. I have a, a share B coming for you guys. I have a lot of other things that I really want to talk about from that S1. And we're obviously going to be talking about an uplist here before long to the OTC QB. So that'll be another video. So expect a lot of humble videos to be coming your way. Um, and I just appreciate the support, guys. I really do. It means so much to me. I can't thank everyone enough. I'm going to do it in every video because it means so much to me. You guys are phenomenal. Smash that like button. Make sure you guys smash that subscribe button. Go check me out on Twitter. Um, it helps out so much because uh, then I can kind of interact with you guys, let you know when videos are going to drop and things like that. So go check out the Twitter. And as always, I appreciate you guys checking out this video and have a good day.